And uh, let's start with number one, one of the more important ones, which is I-step settings. Okay, for I-step settings, the first thing is number one, frames, which is set to 10. Anybody want to guess what, uh, what that's for? The time. The time. The, the countdown. So let's change it so you can see, uh, you can see that you can change it. Set it to 11, Dan. Thank you. We'll hit save. Now, the options are 10 to 200. The most common is 10 to 20. I don't think I've ever met anybody that uses it over 30 seconds. 200 would be crazy, right? Mm -hmm. To have everybody stand on the machine for two or three minutes. The machine, what it does is it takes an average, uh, uh, in terms of the pressure, it takes an average over those 10 frames. A frame is a little bit less than a second. So a 10 frame test is gonna be seven to eight seconds. Then it's gonna do the infrared section of the, uh, of the test, which is the measurement, and uh, that takes two to three seconds. So by setting it to 10 or 11, you're talking about a whole thing of about 10 seconds to get all this great information. Glenn. Is the scan enhanced or less enhanced by the length of the, of the uh, time? Length of frames? Number I of mean, frames? There, there's a point in which it's too short and a point in which it's just too long for practical reasons. No, I understand that. I would say that 20 frames, you might get a slightly more accurate reading on pressure because you have a little bit more time. The downside is for certain people, there's more time also to get fidgety and to move. So I like 10. I think that you want to keep it between 10 and 20. We deliver it on only 10. If a customer uh, move, brought it to 20, there's nothing wrong with that, especially in a store that's not as fast paced. With a lot of these things, there's a lot of art and science built into this, meaning that there's no right answer. And you know, the, uh, the individual store or practitioner is going to make decisions based on their own professional judgment. What I mean, though, is in a busy store, they may want it on five seconds. We feel 10 is what you really need, somewhere in the 8, 9, or 10 is what you really need to make sure it's accurate so we don't allow it less than 10. But that is a good, that's a good point. And when you think about it, it's quicker than a Brannock measurement. Right. So by measuring on a Brannock or a Ritz stick, you really can't do that in, uh, in under 30 seconds to a minute. I mean, maybe 30 seconds, you have to do both feet. Um, you, you're looking at different things. So this captures an accurate length with arch type, pressure points, all these essential elements in about 10 seconds. Pretty, it's pretty amazing. Good question. OK, uh, any questions on frames? OK, you'll see the next time we do a test, it'll be on 11. Set sensitivity. Dan, would you mind doing the test for this? Because uh, there's a lot of mouse adjustments while somebody's on there. Thanks, Dan. Plus, it gives me a chance to sit for a minute. <laughs> all right, so um, what this does is this changes how the test is, is viewed. You know what, you, have, you can stay off for a second. If we close this out, you'll see that there's red and blue and yellow and all these different colors. Now, the sensitivity is really gonna determine how red or how these colors, uh, how these colors work. And when we deliver an eye step to a customer, we do a lot of work to get it as perfect as we can. However, it can change over time. The sensors are incredibly consistent, but the way the technology works is this is a conductive mat that has metal flowing throughout it. When you stand on it, the metal is pressed, is pressed down on the sensors, and based on the pressure, the number that it's reading, the number then is converted to a color. So this mat can vary. As perfect as we try to get this, and as consistent as we try to get it, it can vary from time to time. Also. With a lot of use, it can get worn down a little bit, and that can start changing how the test is viewed. So we built into the software a way to do adjustments to add more electricity, basically, into the system and to generate uh, more red or more blue. And again, this is another example of it's an art and a science. And our tech team and our sales team, which is out there, uh, most of our salespeople are in the US, but we have some international as well, and they're trained to go in and to check this every time they're in a customer store to get it as perfect as they can. We also encourage the store, after an Atrex rep has left, the store, the sales manager in the store or the owner, we encourage you 
to stand on the test and to see what your pressure points would look like uh, when the machine is reading perfectly or close to perfectly. This way you can do adjustments if you need to on your own. If you start seeing that the colors are changing, you can call us and get new conductive mats. But in the meantime, you can do an, an adjustment to sensitivity uh, until the new one arrives. And when you get this new, the new mat, you actually want to double check and get the sensitivity as perfect as you can. So how does it work? That, sorry, Dan. So let's do it. Uh, and one, one more thing on this, actually, while we're talking about it. This is critical. When you put the, this mat down in the cavity of the SP5000, you have to make sure that all four corners are down. The infrared technology that does the measuring doesn't know whether or not it's a foot or a, a curled up corner. So if your store calls you up, or if you're in your own store, and everybody all of a sudden is measuring an 18 or a 17, what that means is there's a corner up and the technology is reading on the measurement and thinking that's part of the foot. Now we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about how the machine does sizing, but that's a really important thing to, to learn and to understand. So when you put this back down, always make sure that the four corners are down. All right, Dan, thank you. Um, you know, one other point on that mat before we do some tests, Dan, is that there, you'll notice that there's a line drawn down the middle of the conductive mat. That's for two reasons. One is to keep your foot straight, to help the customer stand with their foot as straight as possible. And the other is to show you what's up and down. And if you're ever going to flip it over, make sure you flip both. Because if, you're, if you do a few hundred tests, the mat could be affected a little bit, so you want it consistent. If you're going to turn over to the other side, you have to do both sides. OK. So Dan, hop on. Let's do a test. We're going to go back into number three, configuration. Number one, I step settings, and we're going into set sensitivity. So if everybody can do this, that would be great. And for this part, I'll need you to stand up and actually stand on your plate and have your mouse handy. And that's why I asked Dan to do this. Have your mouse handy and do some adjustments. Now, excuse me. The, um, there's three different aspects to this. The first one is the offset. And these terms are really used from, uh, from the uh, electronics industry. The offset is typically used for people who, people who know it typically are guitar guitarists who use it for amplifiers. But this, the easiest way to explain offset is this is typically what determines the color of the test. So you're, now once you're standing on it, and Dan's standing on ours, you'll see that if, if you move the adjustment, once you move it and let go, it recalculates. Now I raised it from whatever it was, weight, uh, it was probably at, um, I don't even know, it was probably at 60 or so, down to 185. What happened here? What did that do? Made it a lot redder. Would this be accurate? No, of course not. So, and you can see the other extreme. If I go down to zero, I don't even know what it'll register at zero. If I go to 12, it's a little too cool. So what we do is we, we have standards that are used in our I-STEP department to get it to where we think it's optimum in terms of pressure sensitivity. You'll notice that you have to move this to see the sensitivity change. So you'll get it to where you think it's about right. Looks pretty close, Dan. What do you think? Is that about right? Yeah, that's uh, about that looks pretty close to what I should be at. OK. So uh, we, uh, th this is around where it was before. So that does the sensitivity, or the offset. That really is the primary way to adjust the color. Now, the gain really just enhances that. So the gain is a way to work within a certain offset or certain sensitivity. I think you really hardly ever need to adjust the gain. Um, we keep it typically at three. Sometimes it's a little bit higher. But if you move it, you'll see it also impacts the color but a lot less than the offset does. These are more subtle enhancements to the image. So we're really breaking it down to give a lot of flexibility to get the perfect color. Now I want to stress, we do this in our I-STEP department. We have lots of trainings for our sales team so they know how to set this right. 
but we think it's certainly helpful for the store or the user to understand how the technology works. I'm going to leave the gain down at 3, or under 10, that's fine. And the last one is static, or static reduction, is really what it is. And what we want to do is we want to eliminate static from impacting the test. Now, static reduction we often keep very low, but you, don't, you typically don't want it at zero. Because when it's zero, you'll pick up the pants, even or a speck of dust that might be on the conductive mat. So when we first launched the iStep years ago, we didn't have this feature built in. We didn't have a static reducer. So we were finding these random pressure sensors were popping up, and it could be just little dust that's in the conductive mat. Or it could have been the, a, a piece of the clothing hanging over. So it was so sensitive that we said, OK, we like the fact that the sensors are great and they're so <coughs> sensitive, but how can we make it where these little specks of dust can be eliminated. And we built in a feature called static reducer. So what will happen is if I, keep, if I bring static reduction, if I raise it too much, basically it takes too much pressure. It reduces everything. So by doing that, you can see there's no foot left anymore. So we don't want to make static reduction too, mu too much. We want it to be close to zero, but to eliminate the little annoyances that could impact the accuracy of the test. Okay? That's static reducer. Think about it as how much pressure is needed to awaken a sensor, to have a sensor jump in and be part of the test. So if it's zero, that little speck of dust or something that might be on the mat can do it. But if it's too much, then your arch might not get picked up. Or in this extreme, nothing but the area with maximum pressure, the rear foot got picked up. So let's see. I know Dan's pants are rolled up, so at zero it might be pretty accurate still. But we want to put it somewhere in the 5 to 10 range, typically. I'm going to leave it at 5 right now. Um, because if Dan did have his pants lower uh, at zero, that could impact the test. OK? So this is the sensitivity adjustment portion of the software. Uh, it's important to really understand how it works. What I encourage everybody to do is to play around with it a, a little bit. But before you do it, remember where it's set. So write down what the three numbers are for your machine uh, so that you don't forget where we have it set to. And then play around with it and see how it changes it. And, uh, and you can always at least go back to your uh, default settings. Mm -hmm. Now. As I said earlier, we do set this up for every plate that leaves here. So, you know, based on the metal in that conductive mat, it's not, there's not a standard here that's universal for all machines. So if you call us up and you say, I, we might have to send somebody in to check it or to walk you through how to get it perfect over the phone. That's why I encourage you, before you play with it and, and adjust it, write down what your three numbers are so you can always go back to where you were. And then play around and see how it works. Any questions? OK, thank you, Dan. Thanks. OK. All right, let's go out of this. And let's talk about numbers three and four, met pressure and met number of sensors. OK, now most people that use iStep SP5000s or any iStep product, most people carry Linko orthotics, right? Probably if you're watching this at home, you, there's a good chance you have the Linko line in your store. And you know that Linkos come with what options built in? What's an, an L405 have? Metatarsal pad. And an L420 has? Posts. Posts. OK, good. So, a four, so Linkos come with posts and with metatarsal pads. And they come neutral. They come without those, uh, those features. So numbers three and four, we're going to be talking about how does the machine think to recommend a Linko with a MET pad, OK? So what type of patient do you think typically needs a Linko with a MET pad? What type of consumer would benefit from that? Four foot pressure. Four foot pressure, right? Somebody with four foot pressure. Four foot pressure typically leads to discomfort in the ball of the foot, right? So there's different ways to relieve that discomfort. One is, of course, making sure they're in the right size shoe, maybe a, a shoe with a rocker sole. 
or a very common technique used in pedorthics is by having a product with a metatarsal pad built into it, as Linko has. So how does this machine determine whether or not you need a metatarsal pad? I'm going to turn it back on to numeric. We're going to go into graphics, numeric. And remember, now we have a number set to 1 through, uh, to one through 15. Now, my pressure is more in the rear foot area. And I don't really typically require a met pad. I've never needed one. I don't have a lot of forefoot pressure. But probably about 20% to 25% of the population can benefit from a met pad. And um, so how does the machine recommend one or whether, determine whether or not it should recommend a met pad? <coughs> we go back in and you'll see that it says here met pressure one through 14, 15 and total numbers of sensors, four. And what this means is that in the numeric view, if four in a row, touching in any way, diagonal, across, up, if four, in the forfeit area, if there are four at 14 or higher, it'll recommend a product with a metatarsal pad, okay? For that foot, at least. If you look on the right-hand side here, it says arch, pressure, male, female, for sizing. The pressure, no met, no met. That means that for both feet, it's recommending not having a metatarsal pad. Now, I'm going to stand on this machine, and I'm going to lean, or I'm going to, this won't be accurate for my feet, but I'm going to lean forward and try to generate a lot of pressure in the forefoot. So, let's see. Again, I don't really have this naturally. I might not even do it with, by doing this. I, oh, we got three in a row for 14, so I won't qualify for a met pad still now. It says no met, no met. So to show you how it works, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to adjust the settings from 14, four in a row at 14, I'm going to make it 12, just to show you. I don't recommend 12, I think it's too, uh, I think it's a little too light for it. Most people keep it within 13 and 14. And again, another good example of the art and science, when we first delivered iStep, we had it on 14 and 3. And being the foot geeks that we are, we had a lot of debate internally about whether or not it should be 13 or 14. So then we, start, we changed it. We made it 13 and 4. Then we went back to 14 and 4. So I certainly think that 13 or 14 is the way to go. We deliver it more on the conservative side. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then 3 or 4 in the second field is what we recommend. There are definitely schools of thought out there and a lot of smart people who believe that the majority of the population will benefit from metatarsal pads. There are good companies and good doctors out there that prescribe a lot of products with met pads. There are also some very good doctors and good pedorthists who feel the opposite, that most people don't need met pads, that if you give support. So there's a lot of different schools of thought. We deliver it on the conservative side, but the, the store or the doctor has the flexibility to make adjustments and changes. So just to show you, Dan, if you don't mind, let's make it, make it 11. Let's make it 11, and we'll go back and do a test. And we'll close it out. We'll restart it. And I'm leaning a little bit more on my forefoot than normal, just to try to get some, to make sure it pops up this time. Okay, so we're definitely, even if I had it on 13, I was able to get enough forefoot pressure where you can see that both times, instead of saying no met, it says MT, which is met. And what Linko did it recommend? It recommended an L405, which has what? A metatarsal pad. So you click on it and you highlight it. That's how the machine thinks to, deter to recommend a met. If you're, you're going to have... Uh, customers that'll say, hey, this thing is just too conservative. And our met pads are pretty soft. So this is too conservative. I really feel that my more moderate metatarsal pressure customers would benefit from a met pad. You can go and you can adjust it down to 13 or bring it from 14 and 3 or 13 and 4 and make a slight adjustment. And again, I encourage you to experiment with it. 
uh, and, and see how it works. But that's how the machine thinks. It determines, we tell it, we get the settings all set up, and it'll count sensors. And if, the way we have it now, uh, it's, I think it was on 11, but typically it's either at 13 or 14, and, and if three or four are at that level, it'll recommend a Linko with a MetPad. Make sense? Absolutely. OK. All right, so let's go back in. All right. Yeah, Dan. Um, that's just another example of why the sensitivity needs to be set at the beginning, because otherwise you may be recommending met pads or, or not recommending met pads uh, in cases where, where people may need them or don't need them. Yeah, that's right. The sensitivity is important to have that, uh, to have that right. And again, I want to stress that uh, for the general population, typically if they put a met pad on and they don't need it, it'll feel a little uncomfortable. And you know, they, uh, and, you know, it can be tested that way, and they are soft. However, you know, the goal, what we spend our time doing is we want perfection. We want every consumer that is going to be experiencing Atrex products to feel great on, our, on their feet. That's what our brand is about, helping people to continue to do the activities they love to do and not uh, have to deal with annoying foot problems. Okay, so on this screen here, if I hit default, it'll go back to the original settings, which were 14 and 4. It'll bring this back from 11 to 10, which was the countdown for the test. And let's keep moving forward. Any questions on MET pressure and total number of, of sensors and how we determine whether or not the Linko should have a MET pad? Any questions? Pretty easy. Next is Mosaic. Mosaic is a unique patented technology and product in, that comes in Atrix footwear. And all, all of our Atrix shoes have a feature that allows the shoes to be customized to relieve pressure points. So the sandal here has, has mosaic built in. And in the areas of, that are typically have the most pressure on the plantar aspect of the foot, you can peel away different areas to unload pressure. So if it's too much on the fifth metatarsal head, you peel away the square, and immediately the consumer will feel different when they're walking. Basically, this is Pedorthics 101. And going back to the old days, the way it would typically work is I'm going to take a traditional shoe. If somebody had real pressure on their first metatarsal head, which is, uh, which is right about here, Okay, if somebody had uh, severe pressure there, what would a store possibly do to adjust the shoe and to relieve that pressure? Anybody know? Cut a hole in there. Might cut a hole in the insole. Right. So they might go and take this insole and cut a hole in that area, right? Has anyone ever seen that done in a store? Yes. Everybody, right? Yeah. What else might they do that's maybe a little less extreme but similar to that? They might go to a grinder. Yeah, that'll take a ball and ring straight and compress it, they would go to a grinder in the back and grind away. So, it, and it really works. It really works. If anyone's ever had that done, I know for my ski boots, I can't tolerate my skiing unless I have the first metatarsal head area grinded away. And Atrex doesn't make ski boots, so we don't have mosaic built into it. But believe me, every time I've gotten a pair of boots, I brought in that insole uh, and went to a grinder and it really makes a big difference. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced shoes that have created pressure points in your feet. So Mosaic is a pretty amazing product and technology in that it scientifically captures where the pressure points are and recommends a mosaic adjustment. And we have different types of mosaics. This is the mosaic insole. We also have the mosaic layer. Let me see if there's any product that has that here. Dan, let's see. Oh, not this one. Yeah, this might have the mosaic layer built into it. Nope. Let me see. Well, let's try one more. Nope. These are prototypes. Okay, it's okay. The mosaic layer is the, and many of you watching this will have Atrex footwear, and you'll see a layer that either comes in the shoe or comes in the shoe box that has like a battleship grid. And we'll show you in the software what it looks like, but it has a grid and it, every single square centimeter can be removed. How many of you have seen that? 
So we have mosaic insole where the removable pieces are built into the insole or the separate layer where every single piece is removable. Um, okay, so when we get to mosaic, there's a few different aspects where, uh, that you can use here. One, the first button here is show mosaic button. There are some people that don't even want it featured in their software. So if you want mosaic removed from the front end, the area where, where the consumer and the, uh, the area that the consumer sees, you simply uncheck this and mosaic disappears. Hopefully everybody will keep it on because it's great for, uh, for the general population. Mosaic default. This means what do you primarily have? Shoes that have the mosaic insole or the mosaic layer? We're, we'll keep it on. What do you want to keep it on? Insole? Okay, so we're going to change it to insole and we'll show you what this is. And then for the mosaic insole, this is number of sensors and this is for the mosaic layer. Now, I'm going to come back to that in a second, but first we're going to go back to the test so that it makes more sense. Let's close this out. Okay, now we have the test here and we have the mosaic button. So I'm going to hit on the mosaic button, click on it I should say. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that pops up is the mosaic layer. And this is the layer that I was referring to earlier that comes in a lot of Atrex footwear. And every one of these pieces can be removed. And the software, when you click down Mosaic, will give you the exact coordinates to remove. Now, if you need it, if, you're, if it, it's a shoe with a Mosaic insole, all you do is click on this button here, and it'll transfer over to the Mosaic insole. So both are built in, and it's a one-click operation to go back and forth depending on the shoe that you're talking about. So here's, here's what the, uh, the removable coordinates for the insole, and here's for the layer. Now, on the insole, what would happen here if I removed these two pieces? What, what kind of change would a consumer feel uh, by removing those two gel pieces? Less, Less pressure. pressure. Less pressure. <clears throat> That's immediate customization, and I can promise you there's a wow factor with it. No pain. No pain in that area. It immediately unloads pressure. And in today's competitive environment, when most retailers have a lot of different competitive aspects to their business that didn't exist a while ago, I'll give you an example on the shoe industry, e-commerce, right? Yeah. I mean, great companies like Zappos and many of the other e-commerce companies out there are doing very well. What does a store have to do to really compete and, and thrive in today's environment? They need to be a little unique. They need to be unique. They need to do more. They need to provide features that aren't available by e-commerce or by mass merchandisers. There's been a lot of consolidation over the years. Differentiation. Yeah. So I think Mosaic is perfect for a lot of reasons. One is it works. That's the most important thing. This isn't just sizzle. This is steak. This works. This really makes people feel different on their feet. But the other is that the store is providing a feature that can't be done either in the discounters or mass merchandisers or on the big e-commerce companies. And again, for, for good service-oriented companies to survive, their business model can't be built on the service model from the 1990s or 1980s. And when I'm out there in the field, I'm always surprised to hear how many stores still use the same service techniques that they did really before the technological revolution, that, which is what we're going through. I mean, when the, when the internet and technology really drove forward was when? Started in the mid-90s about? Yeah. So you'd be surprised how many, uh, how many customers are still saying, well, we measure everybody's feet on a browning device. I'm not saying that's bad, but again, a lot has evolved. And if a store is gonna thrive in this environment, you gotta do more. And this is a good, a good place to do it. So again, we go back into menu, configuration, number one. And we have, again, we have, we have now the default set to the insole. Mosaic insole number of sensors two. This is the insole. Again, the insole, the mosaic insole was, just as a reminder, was this component here. And 
the number of sensors for this one means that we're setting, telling the machine that it has to have two sensors in a row at 14 or higher to, to, tell, to indicate that a mosaic gel plug has to be removed. So this is similar to the metatarsal pressure section, when, which was over here where we had to have four in a row and 14. For this, is, for this it's mosaic. So for the insole, we're, we have actually, we have mosaic in the forefoot, we have mosaic in the rear foot. And we're saying, OK, if two sensors are touching at 14 or higher, we're going to tell it to remove this gel piece. So what would we need to do to make it a little bit more aggressive, where more frequently uh, it would recommend to remove this plug? What would we have to do? Lower the number lower. eight. Yeah, you would either, you would lower which number? Number eight. Number, exactly, good. Lower number eight to 13 or 12, and that's going to make it where more mosaic adjustments are, are made. If you increase this first one, it would do the same thing. Just like metatarsal pressure, I think 13 or 14 is the place to go. In the rear foot, I would keep it at 50, only your extreme rear foot, uh, rear foot pressure. And really, what I would do is, is only remove mosaic rear foot if the customer is saying their heels are hurting. Because most people, when they're standing on the machine, will have some pressure on the rear foot. That's sure. very normal because you, of just the way the human body works and where yeah. your weight goes. The anatomy of the body. The anatomy of the body. Bruce. Larry, on the uh, gel pads on the mosaic, there is a square that goes around it, and then there's a pod. And the same thing on the heel ring, there's a big yep. ring and a little ring. How do we determine whether it's the whole pod or the, or the square? And how do you regulate the machine to, to do that correctly? The question was, uh, just in case anyone couldn't hear it, was about these two different layers, where in the heel we have two circles, and in the forefoot there's an oval and then a square. We actually have it set up to try to figure out whether or not both are needed. So if there's more pressure that impacts the surrounding areas, it goes to the broader area. Mosaic, setting up Mosaic in this software took about a year to get it right, <coughs> co combining everything. We really worked hard to get it as perfect as we can. And, um, and on the insole, that's, it, it really is done to try to match it up perfectly if possible. A lot of people just take, bo take both out to play it safe, which is fine. Um, again, it's art and science. Um, but, you, uh, but the machine will tell you, try to tell you exactly when it's needed and what area. Does the curve of the pod being removed make it less of a corner compared to a square being painted on to relieve the med head? I mean, there's really no issue with edges or anything like that because remember, one thing great about mosaic and even with the layer, and we did find a layer, <coughs> is that this doesn't go up against the foot. That's one of the great things. This is. So even if you, whether or not you did the oval or the square, the fact that it doesn't touch the foot means it's protective to the, the, uh, the customer. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, so again, I would remove the rear foot if somebody says their heels hurt or they often get heel pain. This is like, in, in, like donuts used to be, uh, the donut uh, heel cushion that used to be sold at shoe stores. Or uh, like somebody mentioned earlier where you would cut a hole in that area. So uh, this is a much more scientific way to do it. It's much more consumer friendly, and it really works. OK, so again, you can enable or disable the rear foot and the forefoot. Guess which one is more commonly disabled? The rear foot, absolutely. And here we're on insole. And in the, in the most, if we're, we're, when we're talking about two in a row, that would determine whether or not to remove the gel piece. If we made it three, it would require a little bit more pressure to tell you that you have to remove a certain area. On layer, you simply set the <coughs> threshold to one of these numbers for the layer. And because the mosaic layer is, just, is every single square centimeter, you can peel off a piece. That's all the machine needs to know is at what threshold do we say to remove the piece. So going back, let me close this out. That's all, OK. So for layer, I believe when we did this test, we had it set to 14, or maybe it was to 13. Let me just click on this real quick. Originally 11. We went 11, and then I think we changed it for this to 14. Let's go back one more time. So we only had one. So here, the way it worked is that we had, one, we had it set to 14. 
So this one over here was recommended to remove, and here we should have one, two, three, four, five. There should be five on the left, one here, and then these together, and one over there on the right. And one really amazing thing about the software, and this actually took, this is one of the things that delayed the project, is the software does a rotation calculation for this. So if your foot is a little bit off to the side, it'll do a calculation and readjust to get exactly where that mosaic layer should be peeled away. It's, it's pretty amazing, it really works. So here, as we said, since it was, we had one on the right, and then we had these together and five on the left. Pretty simple, but it took a lot of work to get it right. I encourage you to use this with your customers, and I think that you'll find that uh, even if it takes an extra second, it's an additional layer of service. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a real wow factor with Mosaic. People feel the difference right away. Any questions on Mosaic? Okay, and again, remember here, we have, we have three buttons. We can go back. Going back goes back to the test. We can print this out, or we can rotate between insole and mosaic layer immediately, very quickly and easily. Okay, so we're going to go back out. All right, now we're going to go.